hi, Sarah here from Henham Yoga and I'm sitting here in the beautiful Bluebells because it's the beginning of May. I hope you're enjoying the outdoors wherever you are. We're going to do a short sequence today. Hopefully this will ignite some passion for yoga in you if you're a total beginner. And if you're a little more experienced, it's always good to revisit the basics and get yourself back into that beginner's mind. We'll start seated, we'll get into our breath, we'll do a little warm up and a sun salutation followed by a short shavasana relaxation at the end. So if sitting comfortably for you does not mean cross legs, that's fine. Sit with your legs out to the side or straight in front of you. You can also sit on a book or a block to help lift your hips a little higher and relax your thigh muscles. The important thing is to make sure you're sitting comfortably. And then we can close our eyes. Place your hands on your thighs or your knees. As you breathe in, squeeze your shoulders up to your ears. As you breathe out, let them sink down. Inhale, take the shoulders up high. Exhale, soften them. Inhale, squeeze shoulder tips to earlobes. Exhale, draw the shoulders down and away, lengthening through the sides of the neck. We're going to take another five breaths, keeping our eyes closed. Inhale, one through your nose. Exhale, back out through your nose. Inhale, two. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Last deep breath in. And out. Keeping your eyes closed, start to drop your right ear towards your right shoulder, just enough so you feel a lovely stretch through the side of your neck. And then come back to neutral and drop your left ear over to your left shoulder. Breathe. Come back to neutral, drop your chin down to your chest. And then blink your eyes open as you look up to the sky. Right ear to right shoulder. Left ear to left shoulder. Chin to chest. Lift the gaze, open the throat. Once more with the breath. Breathe out to relax the right ear to the right shoulder. Breathe in to come to neutral. Breathe out to relax left ear to left shoulder. Inhale to come to neutral. Exhale to drop chin to chest. Inhale to lift the gaze. And exhale to look straight ahead of you. Breathe in, sweep your arms out to the side, gather all the air up around you. And as you breathe out, take your hands in prayer down through the center line. Inhale, reach out up, exhale, pull down, inhale, circle the arms towards the heavens, and exhale, pull the base of the palms towards the earth. We're going to come into a simple twist, so extending your legs out in front of you, bend your right knee and hug it in nice and close, and then take your right hand behind you, Straighten your spine by pressing into the fingers that are on the ground. Make sure you're pressing the big toe down into the earth as well. And then start to take your twist. So you should feel as though the vertebrae are gently twisting around your core of steel, your central nervous system and your spine. Inhale, making sure your chin is out of your chest. And exhale, twist for two. Inhale. Exhale, twist for three. Inhale, come back to the center, release your knee out to the side, giving yourself a massage with your thumbs along the insteps and the tendons that work so hard on the arches of your feet, putting pressure in there to help relax that tight muscle. And then working up to the balls of your feet and your big toe 
and spreading your toes away from each other. And this is going to help us to warm our feet up for when we come to stand on our feet and balance in a bit. And then we're going to hold our feet and gently flap our knees in butterfly pose and this helps to stretch your adductors, your inner thighs. From here we're going to take the twist in the other direction, extending right leg out in front of you, hugging left knee in nice and close, taking the left hand behind you and pressing into the fingers to help straighten the spine. Breathe in, grow tall through the crown of your head and breathe out, ring yourself around. Hold on to that bent leg as you twist. Inhale three, chin out of chest. Exhale, soften your shoulders as you rotate. Coming back to the center, we'll find our way onto our hands and knees. Start to roll around in circles on your palms. So we worked a bit on spreading our feet by massaging them and we're giving our hands a little massage here on the mat. So if you have any issues with your wrists or your fingers, you have arthritis or anything like that, you can take it at your own pace, you can go nice and slow, you can make this feel good for you. Maybe this is a bit too vigorous and you make it your own practice, much lighter, works better for your body and that's what yoga is all about, is making it work for your body. And then from here we're going to spread the fingers wide, press down into the palms and simply shift backwards and forwards in space. So we get kind of a sense of our balance when we're in quadruped. Quadruped is on hands and knees. And then from here we're going to start to circle the hips around the knees. So I find it helpful to look at my knees as I do this and then you can really circle the hips all around, getting into any tight spots, maybe the glute medius at the side of the hip feels good when you take it over to stretch it out. Reversing the direction, breathing in and breathing out. Take, start to take the knees wide. We're going to come back into child's pose. So toes are untucked. You let your arms come forward. Forehead comes to the ground. Elbows are soft and relaxed on the mat. And this pose is actually asking for deep flexion of your hips, your knees, and also flexion of your spine. So for a lot of us, child's pose might not be accessible without using some props. And you can always put a blanket between your calves and your back of your thighs. You can put a blanket underneath your head. Anything that works for you in order to make this pose more accessible and more comfortable. If you're ever hanging out in a yoga pose and you're feeling physically uncomfortable, you're going to be tightening up. Your muscles will be contracting and tensing and that's not the aim we're trying to unwind soften and lengthen as you inhale start to walk your hands over to the right and keep going until you get a good stretch down the side of your body relax the elbows down to the ground again forehead on the earth breathe in breathe out start to walk the hands all the way to the other direction. Make sure you relax the arms down on the ground. Breathe in. Breathe out. Inhaling, bring the arms back to the center. We're going to rise up back into quadruped on hands and knees. I'm going to take my jumper off because it's getting a bit warmer. And then we're going to start to take cat cow. So We'll do a normal cat-cow to start with. Arch your spine, pull up towards the sky, rounding. And as you inhale, drop the tummy, lift the tailbone and look up. As you exhale, press away from the earth, strong straight arms. And as you inhale, start to draw the shoulder blades together behind you as your tailbone lifts. Exhale, round the spine, option to pull slightly back with the hips to get a stretch through the shoulders. Inhale, come back into looking up, opening up through the throat, drawing the edges of the shoulder blades back. 
And now we're going to take it into a rolling cat cow. So pull your seat back towards your heels, round up through your spine, and then launch yourself forward. So you want to put a little bend in your elbows as you take your rolling cat cow. So you want to be rounding and tucking chin as you come up and looking forward and lengthening the, th <laughs> the throat as you drop down. Make sure the fingers are spread wide and this feels good in your body. And then reverse the direction of your circles. So pull back the other way, send yourself forward, round. Try to make shapes with your spine. Keep breathing through your nose. Good job, one more. And come back to a neutral position. So for this one, we're going to roll our chest around. So we're going to come, I'm changing position. You guys can stay where you are. It's just so you can see what I'm doing. What you want to do is imagine that your rib cage is like an oil drum, like a barrel. And we're going to lift it up, pull it over to the side, drop it down, reach over to the other side and roll it around. So you're softening in through the elbows. The shoulders can move too. We're trying to get that sensation of rolling around an empty oil drum, moving the thoracic area laterally. So it's quite a weird sensation, but it's a really good one to practice. It's an unusual movement. We don't do this every day, but it's helping to create more space for you to breathe. Reverse the direction of your roll. So if you were going clockwise, go anti-clockwise and check if you're hesitating or holding tightness in any specific part of the circle. Good job. And then we're going to come back to neutral again. Start to tuck your toes, hover your knees and find your core. So you can feel your tummy is automatically pulling in. You're growing strong through the sides and the back. Round your upper back slightly, drop the knees a little, take another breath. Good job. And then release back down. Come to sit on your heels. If this isn't comfortable, you can always place a blanket between the calf and the thigh. Take the knees nice and wide. Inhale, sweep the arms up. Exhale, bring them down through the center. Inhale, expand the breathing space available to you by spreading your arms out and wide and high. And exhale, take the hands down. One more. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, lower down and then release your right arm behind you and start to take big circles like you're swimming backstroke in a swimming pool. And the next time your arm comes back, look behind you and extend the opposite arm, the left arm in front of you. As you inhale, arms come up high. And as you exhale, you take your right hand to your heart and you circle your left arm up, back and down three times in space. And next time it comes behind you, you hold it there, you look behind you, you reach the right arm out in front. Inhale, reach both hands up and high. Interlace the fingers, find the back of the head and let the back of the head rest into your open palms. Elbows stay wide. Let your rib cage lift, turning it into a little back bend. You can feel the curvature in the lower part of your back, your lumbar spine. As you breathe out, bring the elbows together round your spine and head, let the elbows head down towards the ground. Inhale to open up, lift the chest. Exhale to curl down. Inhale to rise. And we usually do things in threes in yoga. Exhale to curl for three. Inhale to open up. Release the hands behind you. Interlace the fingers in towards each other. Press the palms together. Try to lift your fist off your bum. Squeeze your shoulder blades together. Either stay here. On your exhale, fold forward. You can hold it there. Or if you want to drop the crown of the head to the ground, lifting the hips to come into rabbit pose, you can do that too. Another breath wherever you are. And then slowly start to come back up, releasing your hands out in front of you, bringing your knees underneath your hips and extending your right leg straight behind you. Flexing the right foot, feeling the strong straight right leg coming out behind you. Start to draw the heel towards your bum 
and extend the leg back out. So you're taking these kicks with your lower leg. So five of these. There's mosquitoes in May already. And then start to lift your knee up and out to the side and circle it round. So we're circling the femur bone, the thigh bone within the pelvic socket. Should feel like a good old rotation happening inside your pelvis. Should feel lovely as you get the synovial fluid, the juice moving around the ball and socket joint. And then from there, extend your leg straight out to the side, drop the foot to the ground, bring your left hand into the middle. As you inhale, sweep your right arm up. Maybe you drop it back a little bit. You get a good open stretch through your pecs. As you exhale, you thread the hand underneath and through, reaching towards the side wall or outside if you're outside. Inhale, lift up and open. Exhale to close, use the oblique, squeeze the side waist. Inhale to lift. Exhale for three, squeeze, pulling the core in. Inhale, open up. And then exhale, hand to the ground. Bring the knee in. We're going to go on the other side. So check you've got a good base. You've set up nice and well. And then extend your left leg straight out behind you. Pulling the navel in, lengthening out, making sure you're looking to the front of the mat. Start to take your heel towards your bum. So you can feel the hamstring contracting as you draw the leg close towards your bum. Another one. And start with a bent knee to lift the knee up, circle it round and down. So you can make these circles fast or slow, wide or small, whatever feels best for you in your body. And from here, we extend the leg out to the side, drop the foot to the floor, hop the right hand into the center. Inhale, left arm suits up and open, big open stretch towards the sky above you. As you exhale, thread the hand underneath the armpit, squeeze. Inhale to lift up. Exhale, thread it through. Inhale, reach to the sky. Exhale, contract the side waist to reach to the side. Good job. And then come back onto your hands and knees. Give your tailbone a little wag from left to right to reset your spine. Tuck your toes, walk your hands in towards you, lift your knees up, and we're going to come into a molasses squat. So you want to get your heels on the ground. So take your feet as wide apart as you need to. And a little cheat is to turn your toes out to the side. So that helps to give you a bit more access to the space in your hips. Hands come in prayer, nice straight spine. Breathe in, looking forward, breathing out. This is a really good pose to practice. If you ever see a toddler, they have no problems in holding this position. So see if you, you can increase the capacity of space and flexibility in your joints by holding it here for another breath. And then we're going to take our hands to the ground, slowly coming into a forward fold. So heel toe your feet in until they're underneath your hips. Let your head and neck dangle. If your fingers don't reach the floor, bend your knees until your hands are on the floor, your fingers touch the floor. And then your arms and your spine can relax and soften down to the earth. Notice the sensations in your body. Are your hamstrings pulling? Is it your lower back? Is it your neck? Where do you find this position asks a lot of your body and see if you can soften into that space if it's the hamstrings bend the knees more if it's the lower back make sure you've got the hands on the ground and you're not asking too much of a forward fold of your body you should never want to pull the ligaments in the lower back so make sure you're not forcing your body into this position if it's the back of the neck gently shake your head in small circles all around to try and release any tightness that's residual there from here, we're going to slowly roll up. So press into the feet, take your time, using the muscles in the thighs and the front of the body to lift you up before you come to stand and roll your shoulders up, back and down three times. Come to stand at the front of your mat. 
Inhale, sweep your arms up high to the sky. And then exhale, take your hands down to your sides. Inhale, lift up again, palms meet above your head in prayer. Exhale, take the hands to the sides. Inhale, lift up. This time we're going to interlace the hands, find the back of the head like we did before on our knees. So you can rest the back of the skull into the open palms and elbows stay nice and wide apart from each other. Lift your heart, breathing in, turning it into a little bit of a back bend. And then breathe out, bend the knees, draw the elbows in towards each other, release the arms and sweep them all the way behind you and lift them high to the sky. Inhale, look forward. We're going to come to Utkatasana, so chair pose. So think as though you're sitting in a chair, wiggling your toes, putting the weight into your heels, and then take your right hand to your tummy, gently pull your navel in. Left hand comes to your tailbone, lengthen down through the tailbone. So the whole core, the back, the sides, and the tummy are working to hold you here in chair pose. Inhale again. And then exhale, come down to the ground. Step the right leg back. Step the left leg back. Come down to your knees. Hands are in front of shoulders. Squeeze the knees together. Lift the ankles. Tricep dip. So if you find this one tricky, don't come down too far. Make sure the pelvis is dropping forward and you're not pointing the tailbone into the air. If you're pointing the tailbone up into the air like this, you're just weighting your shoulders, which is no good. We want to weight the back of the arms. So pelvis moves forward. Stay looking forward. Nice long back. Five of these if you can. And then come all the way down to your tummy. Hovering cobra. Inhale, hands underneath shoulders. Squeeze the elbows in towards your body. Keep the back of the neck long. Use the strength of the muscles either side of your lower back to lift your heart a little higher. Take the hands down to the ground. Push back towards the child's pose. Before tucking your toes, lifting up into your downward dog. Straight away, pedaling your legs out. Have a look at your hands to start with. Spread the fingers even wider and make sure that your palms are shoulder width apart. And then look at your toes and you want your feet to be hip distance apart. And you want to keep pedaling out. Start to shift the weight from left to right in your hips. Maybe you bend one elbow than the other, just getting used to transferring your weight around and downward dog. Maybe try shaking your head and neck all around. And then take little baby steps up towards the front of your mat so you find yourself in your forward fold again. Breathe in and breathe out. Gently soften down. As you inhale, bend your knees. Sweep your arms all the way up and high, Adva Hastasana. Exhale, lower the hands to the heart, Tadasana. Inhale, sweep up high. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, halfway lift, hands on shins, look forward, flat back. Exhale, hands to the ground, step the left foot back, step the right foot back, hold it in your plank. Lower down to your knees, drop down to your tummy, hover the hands, hovering cobra again, building that strength in your back, squeeze your glutes. Inhale, lift and look forward. Exhale, hold. Inhale, draw the shoulders away from the ears. Exhale, hands down towards the ground. Press back towards your child's pose. Start to lift your hips, tuck your toes, find your way into a downward dog. Find stillness here, three breaths in your downward dog. Inhale, one. Exhale. Inhale, two. Exhale. Inhale, three. Always trying to slow the breath down. Exhale. Good job. From here, we're going to look to the front of our mat, walk our feet forward, come back into your Malasana squat. So your feet come nice and wide. You sink your pelvis down. Your hands come into prayer. You try to straighten your spine. Elbows are pressing onto the inside of your knees, if that's okay with your knees, to put the outward pressure on them. And from here, we're going to come to sit. So you can either try and do it without using your hands and sit as gently down as you can, or however works for you. Lifting up into boat pose. So variation is toes on the ground or lifting the toes up, squeezing the knees towards your heart, palms facing up, shoulders relaxing down. 
Inhale, hold. Exhale. Inhale, bring palms together in front of you. Exhale, hold. Inhale, lift arms above your head. Exhale, hold. Inhale, take the arms all the way behind you. Drop the legs to the ground and point the toes straight out in front of you. So you want the fingers facing off to the sides. Press into the hands to lift the hips up, coming into your reverse plank. Open up the throat if it feels good, dropping your head back. Breathe in, squeeze the inner seams of your leggings together, squeeze the glutes, and exhale, slowly release down. We're going to come down onto our backs and have a big long stretch out. So wiggle your fingers and your toes, make yourself nice and long on your mat. And then from here, take your hands down towards your sides. Let the palms open up towards the sky. Let the toes fall out away from your heels. And this is often cited as the most important part of your yoga practice. The Shavasana, the relaxation at the end, the part where it all comes together and it feels so good in your body. Let your breath relax. Let it come and go as it wishes. Let your joints sink into the mat beneath you. Allow your forehead to smooth and your mind to wander as it pleases. We'll take a minute like this in the video. If you wish to stay longer, please do. Starting to wiggle your fingers and toes. Taking a deep breath in. And out. Either reaching your arms overhead or starting to draw your knees in towards your heart. Rolling gently from side to side on your lower back. Falling to your right hand side in the fetal position and gently pressing yourself up to sit. We finish our yoga practice by coming to sit cross-legged in Sukhasana, taking our hands in Anjali Mudra prayer at our heart center. With our eyes closed, we lift our thumbs to our third eye, the space between our eyebrows. Loka Samastha Sukhinu Bhavantu, may all beings be happy and free. Taking your thumbs back down towards your heart, and then reaching your arms out in front of you. Namaste. Thank you for watching and following along with this beginner's yoga flow. Hope you enjoyed it. Please let us know in the comments any feedback you had. And if you like this, you'll probably enjoy our beginner's yoga journey coming out soon in our membership area on Hanum Yoga. Namaste.